Thank you. Uh. Mm. Welcome to Wearzilla's Retrospective. I'm your host, Wearzilla. My apologies for being gone so long. Seems my Unicron sickness didn't subdue after last year's anniversary like we all originally thought. Concerate motivation. Motivation to continue the Unicron tragedy. Oh! Oh, you want me to continue? Fine! I'll keep doing the thing that I was going to do anyway! God, remember when I talked about Headmasters? The first in a long line of Transformers anime? Seemed like so long ago. And I still can't get over how many things it did wrong! Super God Master Force just added fuel to the fire with how it seemed to forget that it was supposed to be about the Transformers. Victory may have been a welcome return to form, and Robots in Disguise was... Well, let's just say it was so average, removing the lyric, More Than Meets the Eye, from the theme song was more appropriate than intended. And then there's last year's Armada. You were stalling. Oh, shut up! <coughs> Damn. You just told the world eater to shut up. You're dead. Fine, then I'll just tell you to shut up and move on! And I can't believe I'm starting by talking about the DVDs of all things, but look at this! You got Optimus for the first two discs, but then all the other discs afterwards are all Unicron. Compare that to the Armada DVDs, where they have one character on two discs, but then move on to another one and repeat the pattern each time. You know we're not off to a good start when Shout Factory doesn't give a shit. I mean, this show was the 20th anniversary of Transformers, and they didn't bother giving us separate characters per disc. And look at this. All 51 exciting episodes. <laughs> yeah, right. Whatever, let's just move on to something more important, like, uh, the theme song. Ideally, a show's opening theme is meant to be a hint of what we should expect from this show. This definitely fits the bill. We open with the episode Cybertron City, where Optimus recaps the events of Armada's finale, as well as that in the intervening ten years, the Autobots and humans have begun a large-scale search for Energon. Few minor things. First is that Prime says it's been twenty years, but this is actually a continuity error. The first of many. The next few characters we see are Demolisher and Hotshot, and in Demolisher's case, I'm glad he's back to his original colors. The red and white color scheme the Minicons gave him during Armada did not suit him. And Hotshot I'm glad to see because we will be constantly shown that his character development in Armada has stuck. Unfortunately, the next thing we see is our new human companion character, Kicker. Okay, wise guy. Who gave you permission to surface the city? I don't need your permission. It's my planet, not yours. Now get out of my way. I'm in charge of Cybertron City. You have to do what I say. You think you're the boss? But I've had enough of bots bossing me around. Damn it. If Hotshot's weapon had managed to misfire right then and there, we would have solved one of the show's biggest problems. But before we talk about that, we need to establish Alpha Q, a mysterious individual living inside Unicron's dormant body. Where was he during Armada? For that matter, why is Unicron in a dormant state when we clearly saw at the end of Armada that he was very much alive? Who the hell knows? He channels Unicron's power to give life to his minions, the Terracons, which he intends to use to gather Energon as well with the intent on bringing Unicron back to life. Ugh. Again, this is a dubbing error, since that is an Alpha Q's goal, but more on that later. 
In addition to being reintroduced to Optimus and Jetfire, we also meet Inferno, who we will be talking about a little later, and Ironhide. The reason I sound so defeated when discussing him is, well, if Hotshot was the rookie with potential and went on to do great things, then Ironhide is the rookie that doesn't have potential, yet they keep him on the front lines anyway. And that sounds weird considering what the original Ironhide was like. Makes me think that the name was picked arbitrarily. True, his name's Roadbuster in the original Japanese version of this show, but that doesn't quite fit with the original Roadbuster either. And yes, this is a thing with Cyclonus as well, given how different he is from, well, Cyclonus. The name is pretty minor in regards to Ironhide's other flaws, in particular his voice acting. He's voiced by Matt Hill, who also played Carlos last season, as well as Ed from Ed, Ed and Eddie. And while he did a good job voicing a big buffoon before, the way Ironhide's character is written, his goofy, impractical character model, and Hill's lackluster performance, he just comes across as pathetic. Cut it out! Ironhide, apologize to Demolisher! Why should I have to apologize? He's the one who started it! What is it exactly that you don't trust about Demolisher? Well, he's a Decepticon! Everybody knows you can't trust them. Hey, watch it. With that kind of attitude, no wonder Demolisher doesn't want to stay with us. So you remember how one of my problems with Armada's opening was the fact that it started with a three-parter, even though it really only had enough plot for one, maybe two episodes, if you want to be generous? Well, it turns out Inner John decided to take that a step further. The only important things that happened in Cybertron City was Alpha Q creating the Terrorcon. Episode 2, Energon Stars, a subgroup of Autobots called Omnicons create a new power for the Autobots that end up being pretty useless in the grand scheme of things. And one of the Decepticons, Tidal Wave, gets kidnapped by the Terracons. Episode 3, Scorpionock. Oh wait, excuse me, Scorpionock. Yeah, this won't be the last time they spell the episode title wrong. Alpha Q creates a general for himself, the eponymous Scorpionock, and he and Ironhide have their first confrontation. Episode 4, Megatron Sword. Alpha Q finds Galvatron's dormant body inside Unicron and forges a sword from his spark, and Tidal Wave and Cyclones get recruited by Scorponok. Episode 6, Megatron Resurrected. Megatron, no longer calling himself Galvatron, even though now he actually is in a new body, comes back to life, tortures Scorponok into submission, and forces Alpha Q to retreat with Unicron's head, leaving the Decepticons in possession of his body. And finally, in Episode 7, Megatron Raid, Demolisher joins the Decepticons after being conflicted about his past loyalty to both Megatron and his troubled but ultimately earned loyalty to the Autobots. Notice something about that synopsis I just gave? If your answer is, they stretched out this arc as long as they fucking could even though a competently written script could easily have put all of that into two or three episodes, then you would be right. Have a cookie. This series is padded to fucking shit! Every episode of the series consists of the following. Something related to the overall story arc happens, then we get two or three boring fight scenes, multiple scenes of someone, be it the Autobots, the human characters, or the Decepticons, talking about the plot but not actually advancing it, stock footage of either Optimus combined with his Prime drones or two of the other Autobots combined with each other, and finally we hear the lines, We must do this! We need to do this! We need to do that! We need more energy! We want more energy! We must protect this place! Ah! Stop it! Do something because you want to do it! Please! Just once! And for the love of Scott McNeil, stop stupidly going, uh, and what every other line. It makes it sound like you're not paying attention when other people speak! Ah! Uh, sir, I think you need to stop, like, right now and get a doctor. It's not that bad. Fine, just ignore us. Ignore the fact that you're bleeding from every orifice. Do you remember the Quintessons from the original show? They served as a second faction of villains the Autobots had to contend with, so you would logically think that Alpha Q, a character that likewise also has multiple faces, and indeed the Q in his name stands for Quintessa, would serve a similar purpose, right? Well, the answer is yes, but as an antagonist rather than a straight up villain. After all, it's Megatron that wants to restore Unicron. Yes, I know that's out of character for him, I'll get to that. We're focusing on Alpha Q here. Concerning Alpha Q, it's clear that being an antagonist with unknown goals was supposed to happen in the original Japanese version. Because here in the English dub's early episodes, 
they try to play him off as if he is a villain, with lines from Kicker about how he's worried he's up to something evil. And as a result, when I watched this for the first time, I thought Alpha Q was a pathetic villain. Everything he tries in the first half of the series ends in failure. He creates an army of Terracons, and they are cannon fire for the rest of the series. He forges a sword from Megatron Spark, only for the Autobots to mass-produce the thing, making it pointless. He creates Scorponok to be his general, only for Scorponok to get tortured by Megatron and then forced to become a Decepticon. And now he uses Unicron's power to bring Starscream back to life. You remember how Armada handled Starscream Light, a character with uncertainties about his place in the universe that underwent a lot of development throughout the series? Well, he briefly serves as Alpha Q's assassin, but quickly gets captured by Megatron, who uses his own connection to Unicron to torture and brainwash Starscream. And I hope you like what happened to him in Armada, because for the rest of this series, he just obediently serves Megatron. That's it. I honestly don't know what's worse. Trying to pretend all of Starscream's development didn't happen, or yet another failure on Alpha Q's part. And yet they still want us to think he's a legit threat! It isn't until the episode Rodimus, Friend or Foe where we finally drop this idea, and instead hit that Alpha Q's intentions aren't villainous, but nevertheless are at odds with the Autobots. Hotshot had alluded to a rogue Autobot by the name of Rodimus a few episodes before, being contacted by Rodimus, who wants to talk to him in person. Turns out Optimus and Rodimus have conflicting ideals, especially when it comes to Unicron. Unicron will live again. Come on! Do you have any idea what he's done? I do. Unicron, as you know him, is a vicious transformer that lives only to devour everything in his path. I once thought that too. But now I know that he is being controlled by someone for a different purpose. You. Only time will tell, but for now I want you to hold off on attacking Unicron. I still don't understand. I realize that this is a difficult request. Hmm? I've known Optimus all my life. I know how he operates. Right now, the one thing he's got on his mind is protecting Earth. So, Hotshot, that's why I'm depending on your help. I can't, Rodimus. You're asking too much of me. A what? I made a promise to Optimus Prime and the rest of the Autobots. I'll stop Unicron at all costs. And if you stand in my way... You become the enemy, too. You don't want to do this. You're a team player. You and I would make a great team. You don't get it. I'm already part of a team, led by a great leader. And I only take orders from Optimus! <gasps> Did you notice that? That brief shot that showed Hotshot's face was hand-drawn instead of the CGI model that the show usually uses up to this point. For some ungodly reason, the animators decided to hand-draw all the human characters and backgrounds, but use CG models for the Transformers. Unfortunately, it's very poorly animated CG, with the characters walking around like they don't weigh anything, their arms and legs swinging back and forth in a pitiful attempt to make it look like they're moving. And the faces, oh god. Where's the 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 Okay, 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 take it easy. Just just better be important, you two. Important? Don't you know? It's time! For the Transformers Guess the Emotion game by Hasbro! Here we have Ironhide. After retrieving the Energon Star, and is about to battle the only character in the show with an arc. This is for 50 points, truck truck. Um, is it Defiance, Determination? And the answer is... Soul Surprise! Mm. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Here is Megatron, ordering an evacuation of his troops after the Autobots activate the energy grid for the first time. Um, constipation? Oh, surprise! surprise! Uh, Here, Rodimus reacts. Hang on, hang on. I remember this sketch. Let me see if I let me see if I can guess the next few. Um, dull surprise, dull surprise, dull surprise, dull surprise, and I'm going to say dull surprise. Congratulations, you won and lost at the same time because that's all you're going to get with this show. It's why we have to savor the few times they actually bother using hand drawn animation. It looks so much better. The Transformers will return after these messages.